Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or <clears throat> arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not terrible or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Mother's Day by Doreni Laux. I passed through the narrow hills of my mother's hips one cold summer morning. Maybe it wasn't summer. And never looked back until now. Clipping her tough toenails, sitting on the bed's edge, coming out the tuft of hair at the crown where it ratted up during her sleep. Her thumbs locked into her fist. A gesture as old as she is. Her blanched knees fallen together beneath the blue nightgown. A stroke took whole pages of words. Random years tore from the calendar. The names of roses in her driveway, Cadenza, Great Western, American Beauty. She can't think, can't drink her own tea. She couldn't do her crossword puzzle in ink anymore. She's afraid of everything. The sound of the front door opening, light falling through the blinds, pulls her legs up so that the bright bars won't touch her feet. I help her with the buttons on her sweater. She looks hard at me and says the word sleeve. Exactly, I tell her, and her face relaxes for the first time in days. I lie down next to her, the flowing sheets, and tell her a story about the day she was born. Head first into a hard world, the Great Re Depression, shanties, Coovervilles, rail roads, and what is that one? Hmm. Unions. I tell her about Amelia Earhart, and she asks, air? And points to the ceiling. Ask heart, and points to her chest. Yes, I say. I sing Cole Porter songs. Brother, can you spare a dime? When I recite lines from Gone with the Rain, she sits up and says, potatoes. And I say, right again. I read her Sandberg, some frost, and she closes her eyes. I say, yes, yes. And I tuck her in. It's summer. She's tired. No one knows where she's been. Thank you, Coy. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our help and our Redeemer. Amen. I shared um, earlier that this 
season is uh, gathered around the theme of Rooted in Abundance. Today's title is Rooted in Love. I have this image in my mind of a tall tree in the forest, the huge canopy, bright green leaves, a tall, strong trunk with branches stretching out. And if I could look beneath the soil at my feet, I would see roots spread out as far or farther than the branches above, reaching down deep to cool, refreshing water, reaching out wide to absorb nutrients which will help it grow, roots intertwined with the roots of other nearby trees giving support, communicating one to another in silent whispers about the last season or the next season or a season years and years ago. So many roots support each tree. All of them together provide what's needed for the tree to grow high and strong and full of life. I think about that tall tree in the forest as I look upon the sapling I planted a year ago, an ornamental dogwood. I think of how I prepared the ground, added fertilizer and compost, watered faithfully through the hottest days of summer, and how now it is just blossoming with lovely pink-white petals. And I think It is the love and care we receive early in our lives which helps us grow roots deep enough to weather the many droughts and storms and seasons of our lives. It is, of course, Mother's Day. It is this day uh, to celebrate those who brought us into being in this world On this particular Mother's Day, I came across this poem by a a poet who is just down the road at Pacific University. And at first it made me cry, and then it brought to mind those words from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful, does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. This, as you know, is a text that is often read at weddings. It is often shared in that context of romantic love, but it might come as a surprise that the love spoken of here is not eros, it is not romantic love but another word in the Greek language, agape. Agape love is a selfless love, a sacrificial and unconditional love. And I've been thinking about that love and where we see it in our lives. This week I was reading the book, uh, Fierce Love, by Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. Fierce love, a bold path to ferocious courage and rule-breaking kindness that can heal the world. How about that tagline? She is the pastor of Middle Church in New York, a multiracial, multicultural congregation. She writes about fierce love in many different ways, about the fierce love that empowers us for justice and liberation and self-acceptance. She also writes at length about her relationship with her mother. And there's this beautiful exchange when she goes to visit her mother as she is in hospice care. And she's sitting there in the chair watching her. She looks up to see her mom watching her. She says, Mom, what are you doing? I'm watching you. Mom, why aren't you sleeping? I don't want to miss seeing your face. I want to memorize it. You're beautiful. You are too, mommy. Do you know how much I love you? I do. Do you know how much I love you? Yes, but I love you more. (laughs) She writes of her mother in this book with great tenderness. 
She writes of how she cared for her when she was just a young girl, how she faithfully prayed, how she raised her to be a strong woman, to be a leader. She also writes about some of the disappointments that she felt she received from her mother. How when she was just a young girl, her mother failed to see and protect her at a time when she really needed that. How at other times her mother remained silent and submissive when her father cut her off because she had married a white man. When she really needed her mom to speak up for her, she did not. She paints at the same time a loving and yet a, a very honest picture of a love that is both tender and fierce. A love that sustained many storms throughout life. A love that bears all things, believes all things, and endures all things. But on her journey, she had to learn first how to love herself, her authentic self. She had to learn as she grew how to recognize her own voice, to raise it, sometimes even in conflict to her parents, her mother. Part of her journey was learning to listen to that voice within her and to speak her truth. And out of that love for self, she was empowered to truly, fully love others with a radical, revolutionary love. I was thinking about her, and I was thinking about this poem, and I was thinking about many of you who are in the sandwich generation. You know what the sandwich generation is? You're there at the one hand caring for young children, maybe partners, but you're also caring for your aged parents. And I know some of you who are also transitioning from that place into the place of needing care and how hard that is and the love that it takes to both step into that new role and to release yourself into that new role. And I see how the supply of love is sometimes stretched and yet when needed you somehow always find a reserve because the roots run deep. I want you to know that I pray for you. I want you to know that you don't have to do it all on your own. Sometimes we get that idea that we have to do it all on our own. That we have to be the one who cares for our loved one. That nobody else can come into that space. But I want you to know that we are the church. And at its best, the church is a body of Christ. And it is the love of God made manifest in the world. Like roots of a tree, we are members of this one body. And we need each other. We need more than one model of what love looks like. For as amazing as my mother is, and your mother is, and every mother in this room probably is, there is not a single mother whose love is as complete or as perfect as we need it to be sometimes. Jackie Lewis writes in her book about Ubuntu philosophy, an African philosophy which speaks of our interconnectedness. And she says, I am because you are. I am who I am because you are who you are. Mom, if you're watching, I want to say I am who I am because you are who you are, for better or for worse. <laughs> you might turn to your mother if you're here today together and say, I am who I am because you are who you are. But this is true for all of us. We are all connected to one another. So this morning, I invite us to recognize those whose love, both tender and fierce, gave you the roots you needed to survive and thrive. The ones who grounded you, 
who nourished you, who supported you as you grew and changed and became strong, and to give thanks for each and every one of them. There is no one way to be a mother, we know this. Mothers are moms by biology and adoption or marriage. There are foster moms and godmothers and grandmothers and sisters and aunties and band moms and den moms, teachers and mentors. And I invite us to remember each and every one and to celebrate them today because no one person will ever be all the love that we need. We all need to be loved. We all need people who will be both tender and fierce with us and for us. Jackie Lewis writes how, you know, she lives in a very cosmopolitan place and many different people from many different walks of life and different beliefs. She talks about her definition of God. The one that she is most sure of is that God is love. For our scriptures say God is love. And all of us can look at least to that perfect love as an ideal to aspire to and a source that can sustain us as we seek to be love to one another. So I invite us to strive today to share that same kind of love, that patient and kind and enduring love with others who might need it today. Mother's Day in America is such an interesting thing. It is both joyous and happy. It is a celebration of gratitude. And for many who have many different experiences, it can be a day of very complicated emotions. As a culture, America has a very complicated relationship with motherhood. On the one hand, we put mothers high on a pedestal and treat mothers as if they are sinless saints, beginning with the Mary, the, the mother of Jesus. And this can create kind of expectations that would be difficult for any mortal to attain to, <laughs> to remember every birthday and anniversary, and to always send a card and make a call, and to get just the perfect gift. At the same time, our culture takes mothers and women in, in general for granted. This time, there are laws which would force women and girls to, into motherhood against their will. We have a country with insufficient prenatal and postnatal care, insufficient maternity leave, lack of affordable health care, nursing rooms hidden in closets, if available at all. America doesn't know what to do with mothers. And yet today's mothers have high expectations for themselves. They're expected to raise healthy, well-adapted children, to keep a clean and tidy home, serve nutritious food, help with homework, volunteer at school, maintain healthy relationships with their partners and friends while continuing their own careers and make it all look easy. These are impossible demands. This morning I could have preached about Proverbs 31 women. I could have preached about mothers and the mother, mothering heart of God. I could talk about God as a mother hen gathers her chicks or the mama bear who protects them fiercely. All of these are true and good in their own way. But practitioners of fierce and tender love, you who nurture and care for elders and partners, for children of every age, sometimes all at the same time. This morning I want to say we see you. We see you rise early and go to bed late. We see the physical and emotional labor you carry. We see your sacrifice and dedication. And yes, we see you in all of your human perfection and say you are indeed loved and blessed. I want to close with a litany for Mother's Day, which is adapted, um, written by Amy Young and adapted by Reverend Heidi Carrington Heath and Reverend John MacGyver Gage. On this Mother's Day, we honor the beautiful, the hard, the messy human experience of mothering and being mothered. 
There is no one way to be a mother or to relate to a mother despite the hallmark card visions offered to us. And there is no one perfect biblical experience of motherhood either. So particularly today, we sow our prayers wide and deep. If you are like Hannah, struggling with infertility or a miscarriage, or if you are like Rachel, or counting the women among your family and friends who year by year and month by month get pregnant while you wait, we are praying with you. If you are like Naomi and have known the bitter sting of a child's death, or if you are like Joseph and Benjamin and your mother has died, we are praying with you. If your relationship with your mom was marked by trauma, abuse, or abandonment, or she just couldn't parent you the way you needed, we are praying with you. If you've been like Moses' mother and given a child into adoption, trusting another family to love your child into adulthood, or if you've been like Pharaoh's daughter, called to love children who are not yours by birth, we are praying with you. And if you are watching or have watched your mother age and disappear into a long goodbye of dementia, we are praying with you. If you are like Mary, pregnant for the very first time and waiting breathlessly for the miracle of your first child, we are praying with you. If your children have turned away from you, painfully closing the door on relationship, leaving you holding your broken heart in your hands, we are praying with you. If motherhood is your greatest joy and toughest struggle all rolled into one, we are praying with you. If you are watching your child battle substance abuse, a public legal situation, mental illness, or another situation which you can merely watch unfold, we are praying with you. If you, like so many women before you, do not wish to be a mother, are not married, or in so many other ways do not fit into societal norms, we are praying with you. And this year, this week in particular, we pray for women like Bathsheba, who have motherhood thrust upon them without the just social, economic, and legal resources they need to shape their families as they would choose. And like Dinah and Tamar and countless others whose bodies and reproductive lives are controlled and commodified by men, we are praying with you. If you see yourself reflected in any, all, or none of these stories, we are praying with you. This Mother's Day, wherever and whoever you are, we pray with you, we walk with you. You are loved, you are seen, you are worthy, just as you are. We give thanks for you and for any and all in this life through whom we have experienced the love of our God, like the best kind of mother. And we pray that you may experience the deep, wild love of our big, beautiful God, who is more than the best parent we could ever know. Amen.